Hi there, Christian Henson for Split for our audio here. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about this. The whole kind of nub of the Spitfire audio project was composers making tools for other composers. And I believe we hit the zenith of that with the Drama Toolkit project. So it's a real pleasure to welcome back not only the curator of the Drama Toolkit idea, but also the progenitor, a massively successful and in-demand composer for film and TV and a very dear friend, Mr Samuel Sim. How are you doing? Very well, Christian. How are you? You're down in London at the moment. I am indeed. I'm so sorry. Sorry that we can't be together in person, but all the more reason for doing another drama toolkit further down the line, don't you think? Yeah, we'll just keep them going. <laughs> <laughs> so before we kind of get into really deeply explaining the concept and all of that kind of stuff, I have to say that usually when we release stuff at Spitfire Audio, the whole team gets very excited about it. But I've never witnessed such a universal love of this latest instalment. Everyone's been totally falling down rabbit holes with it. So do you want to just explain about what sounds make up this library and what it sounds like? We can just kind of jump straight in there. Yeah, well, absolutely. This is um, a library that I see very much following on from the British Drama Toolkit. And obviously um, there where we had um, a lot of acoustic instruments with violins, cellos, woodwind and that kind of thing. This is um, based around synths, guitars. We've got some vocals in there and um, it just kind of covers a more a sort of modern, up-to-date scoring toolkit. So this is Frozen Textures. For those of you who have found us through the Labs project or indeed originals, you'll see that a lot of our libraries uh, use these expression faders. Whereas there's a departure here, and this is your concept, Sam, is that it's actually a velocity-based library uh, so that we can use it as a writing tool, writing with both hands, but as a means of working through the layers. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So the, um, the idea is that then you can have, you're free to play with both hands without having to have a... Uh, one hand on the faders. It also means that when you are um, writing, specifically writing music to picture, and you're trying to avoid bits of dialogue and that sort of thing, or you're just uh, building up tension before you drop your a melody or that kind of thing, you've got um, a, a layer where you can hold some kind of um, chord or something, and it's very quiet. But then when you want to bring out the same notes, um, you have some more. And those are totally different samples, but they're just layered on top of the others that are only activated when you press harder on the keys. I think it's worth mentioning that existing owners of BDT, there's an amazing deal on at the moment um, with the introduction of CDT. So check on the links down below, go over to the site and make sure you're logged on to see what price it'll be for you. So the concept for contemporary drama toolkit, I think the thing that we really want to get across, Sam, is it's not just for contemporary subject matter. What do you find, what are you faced with as a media composer today? I'm doing a, um, a period drama at the moment that's um, based in uh, ancient Rome, long-running uh, serial drama. The brief from the, um, the network is very much that this should have a contemporary sound. And um, I think that that's a very um, tricky word for um, composers to know exactly what to do, because to my mind, a, um, the word uh, like a contemporary score could be done on a solo violin or on a piano. It's very much within the way that you go about writing rather than the sounds that you use. However, when you're dealing with a note like that from a network, I would say that you know they're trying to avoid what um, you would traditionally think of as period drama music. So they don't want a um, string quartet. They don't want something that sounds like um, uh, florid um, counterpoint and um, uh, mock classical music. This is combi textural. Guitars doing um, very kind of soft plucking and tremolo to give you these uh, textural underscore and then there's harmonics, electric guitars, acoustic guitars that have a, a very hard kind of percussive um, 
hits to them so that as you move through the velocity layers, you can get a very different sound through the performance. So in that kind of patch, what you're listening to is there's a combination of um, uh, synths, there's guitars that have been bowed, and also there's a volume pedal to give them some kind of shape. And then there's uh, some vocals in there. I'm not sure, are we allowed to say who the vocalist was? No, I'm sure she's very proud of them, and so she should be. <laughs> uh, Spitfire's very own um, Homme added her vocal talents. And then they're staggered in a way that um, as you increase the velocity of um, how hard you play, you will activate totally different samples. And so uh, the idea is that you can actually... Uh, really score with one patch. This is mixing Homme's vocals with another patch called Peaceful Air. Absolutely stunning. Personally, I tend to use quite a lot of vocals. I think that it's a fantastic way of um, accelerating the emotion in any score. You know, the uh, the human ear is uh, immediately attaches to uh, vocals in a way that I don't think we do to anything else. And I think it was um, a really beautiful part of the. Uh, the overall sound. I think the key thing for me is this is not a, just a production tool, it's a writing tool. So by using velocity, you enable people to work with both hands. Is that correct? You know, to move up through these layers. Again, trying to create instruments that where you really can uh, connect into the performance of playing, feeling that you're not just staring at a computer, you are actually engaging with some kind of instrument. You can make strident moves in that you're concentrating on what um, you're trying to write and uh, compose to, and you're not constrained by, right, now I need to, when I want to move to the more aggressive bit or now the bit of the music that I need to kick in, I don't even have to change to a different patch. I don't have to stop playing. It's There's a lot going on underneath every single note. Yeah, that's what I've, I'm starting to really kind of love about sampling is it, it enables you to in, insert a performance into a very early part of the writing process. Not to mention the fact that when we're, we're up against it, we're really up against it, aren't we, Sam, as media composers? Speed is of the essence. When I first started in the business, I would listen to soundtracks and go, oh, that's amazing, I love that one, this is really good. And then I'd listen to another... Um, uh, soundtrack and think really I know that what was the composer thinking and then I remember my kind of first day on the job suddenly it the dawned on me how long you were given to actually write and produce this stuff and it was uh, incredibly intimidating and kind of mind-blowing at that stage that you'd have uh, so little time and um, I think that for anybody out there who's um, in the business knows that only too well. And I think that it's just little sounds, um, bits, fresh bits of inspiration that can come in and just uh, can be the thing that just saves you, breaks that writer's block or that hesitancy is, 
and you just you just need something sometimes that just gives you that little fire that sets it all going. And I think that's what a lot of the Spitfire team, who are mainly most of the people who work for Spitfire, are recovering musicians or composers of of some sort. And I think that that's what they're finding is this kind of instant gratification, and it's it inspires you to create different music, which is something I I always enjoy in a sample library. And melodies is still important for us. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, uh, there's several composers and um, producers that I have this argument with all the time about whether they're Beatles or Led Zeppelin. You know, can you hum it or can you headbang to it or whatever <laughs> it is? But I, I still maintain that it's uh, melody that sticks with you the longest. But it was a really long experimental process, working through guitar samples, all sorts of different synthesizers and stuff. There was a much more back and forth than we would usually have with the sample library. I don't know if you want to describe the process a little bit. I think it was. Uh, it comes down to uh, the idea of what is contemporary or um, what we think of as a uh, contemporary score. And um, I think that for the British drama toolkit, it was, there was a kind of... Uh, clarity or simplicity is the idea that we'll get a um, a full range of um, the strings, you know, the bass, uh, cello, viola, violin, and um, and likewise with the woodwind. But for this, it wasn't quite as um, immediate, I suppose, as that because we were thinking, when I'm playing these patches, what's missing? What is what is that bit of magic that we want to add? So, and that led us, in, you know, down a rabbit hole of extraordinary experimental recording shenanigans which included i think putting a microphone out in the rain to trigger your modular system and all of that stuff so i think there's uh, actually there's one patch piano cloud and if you listen carefully you can hear the birds singing outside christian's studio <laughs> from the <laughs> microphone So yeah, there's a uh, real genuine Edinburgh birds. Now, within CDT, we've got 10 banks of sounds. And, and the, the star of the show, I think, are these combis, which are almost these, these sound worlds. Now, you mentioned, Sam, about the need for speed. For me, uh, what I find really frustrating about working really under the cosh is the ability to indulge in creating these very finely woven textures. And I think what's really important when people maybe go through these combis is to go through the different layers because that is where one of the real strengths of the, the library lies. You have to play each patch for quite some time to actually realise exactly what's going on under there and how many details there are. You know, there's there is a huge amount of effort to um, try and make uh, every layer uh, interesting and that it could stand on its own so that if you, um, rather than you're just thumping away at a whole um, load of different triggers of different samples, if you just land on, say, some one of the, the layers, it holds a lot of beauty within itself. Um, this is a patch uh, with uh, three layers here. I'll just I'll walk you through. This is... So you have a very gentle electric guitar pluck then a lot of undulation within the synth so that you can actually hold down um, a chord for a long time without it um, looping or getting too boring. Then you have a mid layer. And then obviously if you need to actually push that and uh, really um, make a moment out of it or really try and pick out certain notes of your melody, there is a, a kind of wailing lead on the top.
That's absolutely stunning. And just from experience, I, I know how difficult it is to make these synths sound that good and to bring all of these layers alive. In fact, I was doing some homeschooling in my studio recently and my daughter pointed to my bank of vintage synths and said, Dad, I've never seen you actually play those. Are they just for show? I imagine CDT is going to keep them on show that little bit longer. But I think that that's a really important point to, to creating all of these finely produced layers can be a really exhaustive and time-consuming process that we don't always have the, the, the uh, privilege of. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, you know, quite often when I'm doing um, serial drama, sometimes I'll get a bit longer for a first episode, but when it can get going, sometimes you have as little as four, three or four days to turn around an hour-long episode. And obviously you have... Um, uh, themes and uh, material that uh, you may have um, built up by that point. But it is fast and it's furious. And the idea of uh, leaning out your window with a microphone <laughs> to record the, uh, the seagulls going past or whatever it is, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> and um, I, you know, so I think that uh, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of detail in these samples uh, that... Um, are there so you don't have to do it. <laughs> One of the real latecomers was something that I suggested that was was the idea of some pulses just to sit underneath and help motor scenes along. And I very much enjoyed rigging my modular synth up with all sorts of LFOs, which have now been kind of time mapped. And uh, I've been having some fun with that today. So here's, um, I've just gone into the, the synth bass uh, part here and we've got these saw, saw tooth uh, bass pulses. <laughs> running at 120 and again introduce the the um, uh, the neo flautando to that I'm also going to bring some vocals in Instantly just getting a real kind of, as you say, that kind of contemporary edge, um, which seems to mix in really well um, with these orchestral elements. Have you tried it with BDT yet, Sam? I think when um, I was making uh, BDT, I always thought how it would be, um, eventually it would be great to add some more um, uh, contemporary sounds. And um, I'm really pleased with the way that uh, the libraries work together. This patch is a mix of... Um, the, the synth or granular strings that we did for CDT with a uh, strings ensemble, uh, the full string ensemble from BDT. really nice to hear not just a, a very kind of pure string sound you've got uh, all sorts of complication and um, interest that's uh, with them working together. And I think it's really important to mention that we've introduced a new collection um, and to celebrate the launch of CDT uh, if you wanted to grab both it's a, an absolutely amazing price again linked in the video description down below hop along to the site and again if you've already have a copy of BDT log in and check out what price CDT will be for you and there are some string elements in CDT we had a couple of amazing players get involved didn't we yeah absolutely so this time we did um, electric instruments we did uh, electric cello and electric violin and uh yeah beautiful performances and obviously they um uh we were really trying to pinpoint the um uh the parts of those instruments that and what they could offer that uh, would complement C uh, the British drama toolkit uh, to give it a completely new flavour and it's very nice messing with them, pushing the, the boundaries of uh, what kind of amplifiers and effects we could throw at them and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, we have everything from rather beautiful lyrical lines to some really 
grinding, nasty sort of dips and detuned chaos. All good stuff. So yeah, this is uh, the electric cello and uh, this is the um, obligatory flautando patch. <laughs> So you can really hear the kind of the wispiness and uh, really thin nature of um, the electric instrument. We did uh, various kind of um, other articulations or ways of playing. This is um, uh, the longs. And then we were trying to do some more um, effect-based articulations, something like this. Absolutely amazing, Sam. I think the, the idea of being able to create a cue with just one patch is not just to suggest that CDT is massively dense, for me, it's that just every sound means something. And one of my New Year's resolutions is to spend more time doing less. And I think that that very much matches the zeitgeist of what is asked of us by producers and directors. It's to, to do more with less, if you know what I mean, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the amount of times where I've been in a, um, a situation where I've written a, a few melodies for a, a piece... And um, I've come down to my four note uh, melody and the director's saying, do less, do less, do less. And I'm kind of, well, what am I going to do? Three note melody? And um, they're really uh, pushing. And I think that um, it's uh, a reminder of how much music can um, manipulate the picture. And I think when the director is really just looking at the performance of his actors uh, and actresses, and just it doesn't they want the music to hold or something but not take over and um i think that uh it can be a fantastically infuriating thing as a composer where you're being constrained in that way but i think that there's uh definitely tools in here which uh will help uh composers deal with that um for example there's something uh which i always think about when you're writing around dialogue scenes where you'll have some sort of sound that holds a little bit of tension underneath people speaking. And then just occasionally with pauses or little moments where you want to bring out something. Then the dialogue continues and uh, the lovers look into each other's eyes and then... And then I think it's really important as a composer to remind ourselves that we're competing in a congested bandwidth with dialogue, with sound effects, with just the ambience of the world around the characters. So for me, the really important thing is that every note really needs to matter. And I have to say, Sam, the effort and love that you've put into cu curating CDT really does come out when you play it, that every note really means something. And I'm, I'm really thankful to you for creating this for our community. Well, I really hope people enjoy um, playing it as much as uh, we've all enjoyed making it. It's just, it should be called Rabbit Hole Drama Toolkit because that's what it's proven to be for the rest of the Spitfire posse. So there's all sorts of exciting deals to celebrate the uh, launch of CDT linked in the video description down below and let us know how you get on with Contemporary Drama Toolkit. Sam, thank you so much for, uh, for the time that you've dedicated to creating this, but also for giving us your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, mate. Next time in person, I hope. Take care. Thanks, as always, for watching to the end. If you haven't subscribed yet, there's loads of interesting stuff coming up, particularly to do with CDT. I've got a contextual demo that I'll be doing with BDT and some other libraries. So subscribe if you haven't done already. Ding that bell to be notified the next time we put a video up. And one of those to our good friend, Samuel Sim. 
See you next time.